We have the latest developments in the Dylan Dubé and Hockey Canada case, as well as a look back at the first half of our Calgary Flames season. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Locked On Flames. As always, I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and today I am joined by my partner in crime, Nick Zararis. Nick, how you doing? I'm good. I'm glad we're going to talk some flames today. Yes, and today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets if your best bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Uh, today we are going to be talking about the latest developments in the Hockey Canada uh, case. So just an initial trigger warning here. And uh, we are going to follow it up with a review of the first half of the season because that's what happened hockey um so make sure you're subscribed to locked on flames wherever you're getting your podcast and of course on youtube as well we're here for you five days a week monday through friday your team every day it was announced today that four nhlers um the ones that took leaves of absence uh will be arrested and charged with sexual assault uh just before we started recording uh Rick Westhead tweeted a statement from Dylan Dubé's lawyer that he will be charged with sexual assault and is going to plead not guilty. I, I'm disgusted for so many different reasons. And we'll we'll talk about this like we did last week. We will be as tasteful as we can talk about this only within the context of what we definitely know, minimize mm -hmm. speculation. But you and I are in the same boat here. We both saw the flames in that statement they issued say he's stepping away. He's going to be under the supervision of professionals because he's taking time away for his his mental health. And really what it comes down to is one of two things. Either he lied to the flames and the flames still need to apologize for issuing that statement on his behalf or the flames knew and they issued that statement anyway. Either of those is bad. They are not equally bad, but either of those outcomes, this does not look good for the Flames any in any way. No, and I just have such a hard time wrapping my head around them using that reasoning. The same day that Oliver Shillington comes back, and to me, that's either like, yes, they were misled, or oh, well, like, everyone is so happy and supportive of Oliver Shillington. They're obviously going to be supportive of Dubé because he's away from the team. No. And again, we will get some clarity at some point. I know it has been pretty much the standard issue here for all of these teams involved to do the blanket statement, and that way they can do the we can't comment because it's an ongoing legal investigation. Yeah. In this case specifically, I do think the Flames will clarify when they have an opportunity to. I imagine that being that there's a whole week off, that this is going to lend itself to these teams probably not saying anything until games and the players are around again because mm -hmm. teams aren't running practices. They're not having morning skates. They're not having games. So there's not really an opportunity unless the teams themselves call for a press conference to do that. And the one other thing I want to say on this topic. There will be a lot of people who say, if the team didn't know, what would you like them to do? The Calgary Flames are a multi-hundred million, if not billion dollar organization. They employ a security staff. The job of a security staff in a professional sports organization is to do background checks and vet people, to check out information when they are told things. And the most liberal of benefits of the doubt, a lot of this does not add up. That that's what's no. frustrating here. If you want to give yes. the team the benefit of the doubt because you know they didn't know, okay, they didn't know, but they are his employer. 
It is their responsibility to know. They drafted him. It is their responsibility to know that, hey, this may or may not be associated with this player's background. We hear all the time about guys dropping in the draft because of character issues, because of immaturity. Mm -hmm. But when it when teams take chances on those guys, they're praised for giving guys second chances as opposed to taking those cre- these whatever is tied to their past seriously and Mm -hmm. it's it's very frustrating as a fan and the last thing on this before i throw it back to you the calgary flames are asking the province of alberta for how many hundreds of millions of dollars to fund a new a lot in their second straight season of underperforming expectations and all of this inclines you to give the billion dollar company the benefit of the doubt like I understand not wanting to be disappointed in your team, that if you support the Flames, you love the Flames, you don't want them to ever do wrong. But it's your responsibility as a fan to say, hey, if you want my support and my money, you need to do better. And that's why you and I are where we are on this topic. Yeah. And like you said, I I can't bring myself to give them the benefit of the, like the full benefit of the doubt, because like you said, they employ people they have a whole department like i know that you can't comment on ongoing investigations but something tells me that a lawyer would be informed that this is how things are proceeding and it's not like this is an average joe schmo who isn't represented and has to do this themselves like they know and You're going to tell me the NHL has been conducting an investigation over the last 12 to 18 months, and not once did they talk to anybody on the Calgary Flames? Not Dubé himself, not anybody in the front office, not any of the staff that was involved in drafting him. You know, at some point, it's either this is the most incompetently run league in the world, or people know things and they keep quiet. Again, that does not pass the smell check. You are telling me the NHL has been running an investigation for however many months, that the NHL has directed teams, if you get questions, to send them to us, Mm -hmm. that nobody uh, from the league office talked to anybody in the Flames organization, that Dubé or somebody in the organization, if they weren't going to give names, nobody talked that, hey, this could be a possibility. That's where I struggle to empathize with, hey, man, the Flames are just trying to do what they can. They don't want to get in legal trouble. You know, at some point, you need to be responsible here. You're a public facing company. You are asking for tax dollars to pay for your new arena. At some point, I would like a level of accountability here. I, a part of this, and I'll throw it right back to you part of this is the flame saying, we need to be better. This is not going to happen again. And these are the steps we are going to take to make sure this doesn't happen again. A, in drafting a player that, you know, there are. At, allegations about and then be managing if said managing crises in the future whether or not they include sexual misconduct or any other type of misconduct anything yeah just like anything like you should not you are a professional sports team you have every resource at your disposal to make sure that you're protected like that's essentially what you need to do in these situations and to avoid things like this that are absolutely preventative but at the same time like there's just a whole lapse of oh i did like just passing the buck just like we saw with chicago everybody loves to talk about accountability in hockey until it's time to actually until it comes take to them account- it's until it's time for them to actually take some accountability. Mm-hmm. It's one of the buzzwords, culture, physicality, toughness, grit, accountability, all the buzzwords that the hockey men mm-hmm. love to use. But when it's time, we'll see. I am inclined to say the flames will say something specifically because they are the only team whose player requested leave of absence had they are taking a mental health break in the language of their statement. They could have just said he's taking a leave of absence, but mentioning that specifically, we need to know where that came from. That is an important part of understanding this process. And again, like I just said, when you make a mistake, you need to take steps to rectify it. So it doesn't happen Mm -hmm. again. Yep, absolutely. And until we know more, um, 
that's really all we have to say on that. Um, Rick Westhead said legal experts aren't really projecting a trial until 2026. So we will we will see where that goes. Uh, and of course, we will keep you updated on the flame side of this and their you know, accountability and anything coming out of Dylan Dubay's camp. But before we do that, we are um, going to take a quick break here uh, before moving on to the fun, exciting year in review that uh, the Calgary Flames have provided us. FanDuel is the official sports book of the NFL. And if you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super duper bets. Um, I will be partaking in some Travis Kelsey bets. Nick, what about you? Uh, he did me well last weekend in the conference title games. I'll have to see what the lines are, but he's one of the best playoff players ever. Pretty safe bet. So you can get in on the action with FanDuel, and uh, they have so many different ways for you to end the season on a W, one, two, or three, however many times you want to bet. Now, uh, not only can you place... Wow. Not only can you bet on who will win the Super Bowl, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and more. New customers join today and you will get $200 in bonus bets for your first bet of $5 or more. Uh, as long as it wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel. And we have a new sponsor of the show. Get started on your resolutions with Factor. So you're ready for the new year. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. You don't have to go to the grocery store. You don't have to meal prep and deal with cleaning up the kitchen, Factor has you covered. With over 35 meals to choose from, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and more, plus over 55 weekly add-ons, you'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. Uh, need a special occasion meal? Gourmet Plus is the perfect solution for you. If you're looking for a super fast upscale and options done right, the stress level over meal times in the new year is done. You don't have to. You don't have to panic. You don't have. To, Factor takes all that out of you. All of that out for you. Uh, Factor is everything you need for a week of flavorful, nutritious eats. In addition to ready-to-eat meals, they have cold pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, extra protein, veggie sides, and more to keep all of us energized during frantic times. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 and use code locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off. That's code locked on NHL 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to today's episode of Lockdown Flames. Just just have fun. That's what we're here for. First half of the season. Kind of a stinker, huh? They are at the mercy of the professor. They're the kid who's on that C, C minus D plus trajectory where if the professor is nice and the rest of the class isn't doing particularly well, maybe we can move them to the next level. Of the next course or to the next grade mm -hmm. if they're in you know prior if they're in regular school as opposed to college that that's where they are they're in the big fat meaty part of the curve right there in the center where not not really doing a whole lot to stand out no and uh they aren't entirely helping themselves either with no. a bottom of the barrel power play they it's fourth worst in the league i was uh not surprised to see that when I was gathering some numbers. No. So abstractly, you think about hockey as even strength, special teams, and goaltending. Right now, of those three phases, the Flames play pretty good goaltending. They've gotten really strong goaltending from Jacob Markstrom. I know if you look at his goals, his goals, 
his goals allowed average and his save percentage, you would say, well, he's not having that good of a season. But when you go and look at the underlyings and the goals saved above expected, which accounts for the quality of the scoring chances he's mm -hmm. facing, Markstrom's been one of the five best goalies in the league this season, and I have no hesitation in saying that. The five-on-five five play is not atrocious. It's just they don't have any finishing talent, so it's really hard for them to make the most of the opportunities. Like, God bless them, but Blake Coleman be, being your leading goal scorer, you're not going to be a competitive team. Like, on a really good team, like on the Avalanche or the Stars or the Golden Knights or the Bruins or the Rangers, Blake Coleman is a second-line forward. He should not be leading your team in goal scoring if you are trying to win anything. Yeah, and I wrote that down. I was like, yeah, he's been effective through his time in Calgary, but him, like, that should be a red flag. Yes. To anyone uh, in the decision-making realm of Calgary, because he's, there are probably six names that should be ahead of him, realistically, on paper. Julian McKenzie in The Athletic wrote, I forget if it was last week or the week before, but in one of his like recapping the first half of the season type things, he wrote, it's a pleasant surprise Blake Coleman is leading the team in scoring. It's not something the Flames should have A, accounted for, or B, want to continue going forward because that means significantly more talented players, as you just alluded to, are underperforming. And again, that's not a knock on Blake Coleman. He's a very good hockey oh. player. He's a really, really good hockey player, somebody that good teams would love to have. If he was not on a long-term contract and didn't have some level of pro trade protection, he would be arguably the best player available at the deadline mm -hmm. because there just isn't a whole lot out there. But based on what is out there, you know, it, there are guys who are uh, teams are always going to skew towards rental. So the way I broke this up and I figure we can do this is the people who are exceeding expectations, who are meeting expectations and the people below expectations. And then in the next segment, we'll talk, we'll tie it all together and we'll talk about people we're excited about for the rest of the way. Yeah. So uh, the people I am happy with, excited about whatever you want to say first half, I have Blake Coleman, Connor Zary, Backlund, Sharon Govich and Markstrom. Yeah. I have all of those guys, and uh, then I have Uyghur and Pospisil, um, as well as Rasmus Anderson, uh, because he is coming back from a pretty significant injury, yeah. and while he has had his moments defensively, where there's a little bit of, you know, questionable defensive abilities, I think that he he has had a pretty decent season. So I have most of the guys I that you mentioned that I didn't have in my first tier. That was like awesome. I have them in the one below. I have them in good. Like I think yeah. Kadri, Anderson, Uyghur, even Noah Hannafin and Pospisil, all good. Nothing outstanding, but definitely above average, definitely helping the team. Just, you know, not on the level of Coleman's are like realistically, I think, especially because Fantilli got hurt, Connor Bedard got hurt. Mm -hmm. Connor Zary is probably going to finish top five in the Calder voting this year, which is awesome. There are so many things that are happening uh, hockey-wise for the Flames that I did not have on my bingo card. And I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. Because if you told me, number one, that Connor Zary and Pospisil would be up with the team for essentially the whole season at this point, um, I, I would say no. And then I'd say, you have the wrong Connor. In the Calder Trophy running, clearly. But good. Honestly, good for him. It's great to see. Uh, and just, I hope he continues. It'd be exciting. Absolutely. Like we talked about a few weeks ago, and we'll get, we'll get to the next segment on this note. When you have young guys exceed expectations and force your hand, that's a good place to be. Is Connor's area top six forward on a Stanley Cup contender? We don't know. Probably not, but it's not impossible. But that's one of the things we can be excited about the rest of the way in that, you know, feature filling out a lineup with a bunch of guys 27, 28, 29 doesn't. You know, Connor's area could be anything. We still, yeah. he's still got a room on his trajectory. And that is something we love to see. And we are going to continue on our positive tra trajectory right after this. Passion, drive, and patience is what brings home the winning trophy. 
and keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, and whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to today's special uh, review, first half of review episode. Uh, this is this is something I'm excited for because, again, it, it's we don't know what the second half is going to hold for this team. And um, I will say, unlike last year, I am not operating under the assumption that things are going to dramatically improve. At this point last season, you know, Kadri was still close to a point per game at the All-Star break. He represented them in the All-Star game last year. He was having a really strong start. And I was operating under the assumption that Huberto was eventually going to get going, and that would be a reason for some optimism that, hey. And on top of all of that, the West wasn't good last year. You know, no. the Jets got in with 95 points last year as the last team in, and the Flames finished with, I think, 91, 92. They weren't... As, as mediocre as they were last year, they were still in the mix until pretty much the bitter end. So I'm under no illusions about that this year. Yeah, I I mean, they are five points out, I think, of a wild card spot. But I just, I don't know. I'm not entirely convinced, but I do think it's going to come down to game 82 because what else would Calgary Flames hockey be without... A cliffhanger. So, in addition to that, before we move on to the players we're excited about, we're going to get to see if Conroy is worth his weight or not because he's going to have to make difficult decisions. He has waited and waited and waited under the guise that, hey, we're only a handful of points out of a playoff spot. Okay, mm -hmm. if you're six points out of a playoff spot and it's a week till the deadline, are you going to roll the dice that you're going to be able to play six, 700 per points percentage hockey when you haven't done no. that all year? If he does that, you cannot take him at his word anymore because of based on what he had said about you can't let guys leave for nothing. And we've heard conjecture about that the Lindholm extension is not is only if he's going to get traded. We've heard that they circled back around on Noah Hannafin but we still don't have any real concrete step. We don't have any clear path forward. I, I don't see a clear path forward to being the team that the front office and ownership wants them to be with the group that they have. And mm -hmm. it's in keeping guys like Hannafin and Lindholm, all that's doing is telling your fans, we would rather be mediocre than actually do the hard work. Yep. And that that's embarrassing. Yeah, I don't know. It's your goal is to win. So construct a plan to win. I am very excited to see uh, Jacob Pelletier return. For sure. This, this is my Stanley Cup. This is what I have been waiting for. And I think that he is someone that is he's fun. He has the good vibes. We've seen it. We've all seen just how excited he gets when anyone else does something. And I think the Flames need that. I really do. Having a vibes guy who can also contribute playing hockey <laughs> is really important. You know, it's great to have good locker room guys, to have people, people like being around. But when those guys actually are both A, talented, and B, have upside that's waiting to be tapped into, that's genuinely something you can be excited about. Also in that category... I have Chillington. I'm very happy he's back yeah. and he's going to get an opportunity to figure out what his hockey career is going to look like going forward, being that they already traded Zadorov and they're likely to trade at least one more defenseman, if not two, in Tanev and Hannafin. There's going to be opportunities here for Oliver Chillington to play minutes to see just how comfortable he is and if the Flames can account on him going forward. 
Dustin Wolf we can mention, Peltier. Yeah. We'll probably get a Matt Coronado sighting at some point as well. Those are all guys that you don't know fully what they are. And even if the team isn't great, you are taking your lumps in the process of something getting better eventually, as opposed to what it is mm -hmm. right now, where it's a lot of every single game is we're hanging around, we're hanging around, we're hanging around with no real bigger picture in mind. Like I get it. The goal is to still make the playoffs, but to do that, is you're going to need something. To exactly. Exactly. It's just not really realistic for that to be the goal. Because like I said before, to make a jump like they're going to need to make to get back into to a playoff spot, not just in the mix, they're going to need to rattle off probably a good three to four weeks of six, 700 points percentage, not win points percentage. They are going to need to have, you know, an eight points in 12 games type run at some point over the next month if they really want to be in the mix come the deadline. And they haven't shown the ability to, you know, win five out of six, four out of six. Yeah, and I think that, that that this most recent stretch of games has really just cemented the fact that they're not necessarily a very competitive hockey team. Um, I mean, you lose four out of six, yeah, four out of six at home, five out of six, whatever it was. Uh, that's not good. I don't know no. who needs to hear this, but that's that's not acceptable hockey. You want a plan. The Flames have failed to materialize anything close to a plan. It has been a lot of, we know we're good. We know we can be better than we've been for 15, 16 months now. At some point, you are who you are. You are what your record says you are, word to Bill Parcells. At some point, you're just a mediocre hockey team. Yeah, and it's all, like, I just, I want to make it clear, because, like, obviously neither of us live in the Calgary market. This is all coming from, like, a constructive place. And yeah. after, you know, watching years of the sport and not just good teams, not just bad teams, like, this isn't just us being like oh they don't play like the rangers and the bruins so like they just stink no we have two they... years of evidence we have two yeah. whole, almost two full seasons at this point we're we're at the 45 46 game mark something like that yeah Th that plus last year we have 130 games of sample to say that good. this is who the flames are like even if okay the one caveat i will say if you had last year's team with this year's Markstrom, they would have made the playoffs. That's the one caveat yes. I'll give you as far as over the last two years, what we can tangibly take away. Last year, they were scoring a little bit more. The power play was a little bit less bad. It wasn't good, but it was less bad. The penalty kill was a little bit better. And all around, everybody was just a smidge better up front. That's not to say weirder things can't happen. It is just that they are unlikely to happen. And when you are a professional sports team, you cannot be building plans around unlikely to happen because then you're not being responsible. Yes. And that's how you end up with a delusional general manager who uh, trades Taylor Hall and what was it, Adam Larson one for one. Taylor Hall for Adam Larson. Yeah. 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 You don't, you don't do that. Um, Tyler Sagan for what was it? Louis Erickson. And um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Something yeah. Like that. Yes. Uh, the 4th of July was never the same after that. So good old hockey. I mean, I'm interested about the deadline. I I don't know. Yeah. I don't have faith because we don't have a track record. We don't. Nope. We just have his predecessor. Yeah. Right. The only thing I will say is he has kind of under delivered the goods in the two trades he has made. Like, he didn't get robbed for Toffoli or Zadorov, but he could have gotten more. Yeah. And we will see, because we are a little bit over a month away from... About six weeks. Six weeks or so, yep. That's crazy to think the season will be there. Um, but I think that does it for today's episode. I hope you all uh, enjoyed the show as much as you could. Uh, leave a comment let us know what you're excited for what you hated and 
I, I don't know, do some crazy mock trades too, because the if the athletic can put them out, so can you. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the show wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. You can follow us on social media at Just Belmosto and at Nick Zararis. And Nick, do you have any parting words for the audience today? Take care of yourselves. The internet can be a bit daunting, especially when stuff like this is going on. So, you know, you don't have to be online.